Hello welcome. I would like to briefly introduce myself. My name is Jihandir Erdogan. I am a pediatrician. My 38th year in the profession. For about 3 years, I have been making health related posts on my YouTube channel every Thursday. This week, I'm going to tell you something important. How to prevent a heart attack early. There is new information about it. I want to share this topic with you. While telling this, I have my own illness story. I would like to start by telling this story. A few months ago, I found out that the left descending vein of my heart was 90% blocked. I just came back from a heart attack, an infarction. Maybe I'm back from the dead. I want to share this story with you. My 60-year-old father also had cardiovascular disease. My 50-year-old brother had bypass surgery because he had three clogged arteries. Since there is such a story in my family, I had CT virtual angiography done about 10 years ago and it came out clean 10 years ago. By the way, we have high cholesterol in our family. I also have high cholesterol and I do intense sports. That's why I was nervous. This CT virtual on Joe needs to be repeated every five years. Although it was a little prolonged, it was learned that the left anterior descending vein of my heart was 90% occluded in the second repeat virtual CT on Joe and a stent was placed in my heart with necessary interventions. To summarize them briefly, what is CT virtual on Joe? In CT virtual on Joe, a vein is entered from the arm, a high contrast agent is administered, it takes an average of 5 minutes, and the angiography is performed virtually. In other words, virtual on Joe is performed without entering the heart, and you see your heart vessels. As you know, there is no other method other than angiography to evaluate the heart vessels. This happens with a true angiogram. Like 2-3% to of real angiography, it can be very dangerous and risky because it is entered into the heart. However, there is no such risk in virtual CT on Joe. As a matter of fact, when it was seen that my second CT was 90% occluded in the virtual angiography, real on Joe was performed and it was seen that it was 90% occluded in the real on Joe as well, and I got rid of the heart attack by placing a stent. So what is the advantage of this CT virtual on Joe? As I said, firstly, you can see the heart vessels by giving high contrast radiopaque material from the arm, without entering the heart. If your heart vessels are open, it means 98% open in CT virtual angiography, but if there is an occluded result, there is 50% false, negative result. In other words, 50% of your real heart vessels may be clogged, 50% may not be clogged, the result may be wrong. But if it says 98% open, it means your heart vessels are open. This is a very important situation. So, friends, who should want this process? Your doctor needs to ask your cardiologist. Why? You take medication for 3 days before having this test. This is because your heart rate should be below 70. If the heart rate is below 70, this imaging is better. In CT Virtual on Joe, there are state-of-the-art devices brought by the advancing technology every year. My suggestion is to have this angiogram done on the latest model devices. Another thing is you have to be hungry. If you are hungry, a more effective image can be obtained. Apart from that, you need to be careful, since you are taking drugs with very high contrast, you need to drink two and a half to three liters of water a day for three days. If you do not drink water, kidney failure may develop, you need to pay attention to this. When I make a transaction in life, I put the benefit on one side of the scale and put it at a loss on the other. What's the harm of this CT virtual angiography? You get as much radiation as you do in a CT scan. But on the other side, you see your heart vessels, you learn about your situation. Maybe you're coming back from infarction, from death. In this way, you need to put it on the scale and evaluate it. Of course, as a result, you should have a cardiologist who will request this examination. By the way, I work in a big cardiology hospital in Istanbul. Every day, we discuss and talk about the issue with our cardiology doctor, professor, associate professor friends. And on this subject, there is new information conveyed to me by a very valuable professor who taught me NGO. I would like to mention these new criteria, the new criteria of CT virtual on Joe here. My professor friend says that of the five criteria I have listed, the first one is if there is a genetic factor, that is, if there is a history of heart disease in family members, first degree relatives, that is, parents, siblings, fathers before 65 years of age, and mothers and siblings before 60 years of age, genetic factor one. Second, if you have blood pressure. Third, if you have high cholesterol in your family, that is, if you have high cholesterol yourself. Fourth, if you have diabetes. Fifth, if you smoke. 
If you have two of these five factors, after the age of 50, the new information my professor friend said, get a virtual CT angiogram every five years. Another importance of this virtual CT angiography, friends, is that it is displayed when your heart vessels are occluded at an early level, at a rate of 30 to 40 percent at the plaque level. Something very important. But stop here. It's my own opinion. As a matter of fact, I experienced it myself. The genetic factor is very important. It was in my family too. If there is a genetic factor on your own, that is, first degree in family members, if you have parents, siblings, uncles, if you have such a family situation, be careful, I think these factors should be taken into account even alone. This is my own opinion. Get CT virtual on Joe. The other is diabetes. If diabetics, especially those who have had diabetes for more than 10 years, are not treated well, and some patients are treated well, a phenomenon called peripheral neuropathy develops in diabetics, that is, they do not feel pain. In fact, pain is a very useful subject. Pain warns you about this. And diabetics don't feel common heart-related pain. In a normal person, that is, your chest may hurt in heart disease, sometimes you think your stomach hurts, sometimes you may think that your neck and arm hurt. These are the early signs of cardiovascular disease. But diabetics don't hear that either. As a matter of fact, there are people I know, there are people I know who have diabetes and die of infarction because they can't feel the pain. Again, there are people with diabetes who have a heart attack because they do not feel pain, and whose heart is severely damaged and whose functions are very low. That's why I repeat, if you have hereditary genetic factors, if you have diabetes, you should also consider this. Another issue, friends, I've had on Joe from the arm. It was a great comfort to be on the arm. They come in here. Meanwhile, normal angiography takes 15 minutes. If a stent is placed, it takes an hour for me to be stented. Very simple. A procedure that takes 15 minutes, normal angiography. A bandage is then applied to your arm, and after two or three hours they say goodbye to you and you leave. But in Anjo from the groin, you have to lie down for six hours. Pretty heavy sandbags are placed on your groin. You must not move, because inguinal angiography is a bit risky and difficult. And an event that carries risks, such as bleeding, hemorrhoids, or other risks. My advice to you, if you are going to be in angiography, be on the arm. By the way, I would like to mention one more thing. Now I am angiography. I am comfortable being a doctor. But they say to me, should we give medicine? Relaxing. I'm fine. I say no need. They often ask. I said why do you ask so often? They said that if you get stressed, your heart vessels contract, contract. That's why we're asking. I mean, my friends, the more stress you experience, the more nervous you are exposed to during the day, your veins shrink, even your capillaries shrink. You know, they say, sharp damage the vinegar cube. Live comfortably. Be relaxed. Your life will be extended. This is what I want to say briefly. Thank you for listening to me. There are two things in life, love and knowledge that multiply by sharing. Please share this information with a relative if you find it useful. Maybe you will save a loved one from a heart attack. Take care of yourself, stay healthy. Goodbye.